some shit. What's up guys, my name is Imani J, cool name I Many Moss, and welcome to my first, my first moto vlog. Uh, I'll tell you when, I, I haven't posted in a while, haven't been on this channel in a while, uh, I've been working on some other things, and you know, I just recently bought a motorcycle that I've been meaning to do for seven years now. <laughs> it was, it's been seven years since I took the BRC course. Um, and I'll tell you the story behind that because I wasn't even I got my motorcycle license by accident <laughs> I was not even planning on riding a motorcycle when I took the course. So um, Yeah, I, I did not know that this was gonna be happening, but I'm not new to, to video stuff or creating content. Um, my background is in video um, I love I love film stuff uh, but I sold my Blackmagic film camera to buy a GoPro and start doing this because I had a crazy spiritual awakening about a year ago <laughs> and it sent me on a completely different path in life so I'm selling all my shit I'm keeping my motorcycle my laptop and my GoPro and I am you know getting a, a one-way plane ticket to a new destination and starting over from scratch in the field of you know self self uh, self discovery so this is kind of part of that uh if you're here for motorcycle related content um like specifically then this is probably not the channel for you <laughs> uh i'm someone who likes to combine fields and you know be innovative in in uh i just don't like lines you know like if you have a moto if you have a moto vlog I just don't like the fact that it, it has to be about motorcycles or like if you have a, like a like a lifestyle channel like I, I don't know I just feel like life is more messy than that and like I like to blend I like to blend fields and and stuff like that together like take example I did a, a music video series where I uh, the 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 concept behind it was you know combining music um, tarot cards and uh, and um, interactive video together. So, you know, that's just something that I like to do. So this channel is kind of gonna be moto vlogging, but the content is gonna be more, you know, spirituality, lifestyle, motivation, um, stories, experiences, uh, while I'm working on a empirical guidebook that kind of translates my own spiritual path and my own spiritual journey. So that's just a disclaimer for, you know, the brand if you want to you want to brand me um the kind of content that i'm gonna be making so how i got into being on a motorcycle first of all i'm 411 <laughs> it never even occurred to me to be riding a motorcycle ever in my life i went to college about seven years ago eight years ago whatever and the after that first summer i realized that i really needed a vehicle to get around because I, don't, I lived on campus and like the nearest grocery store was super far away so I would walk like every week to the grocery store and I just got sick of it especially in the summer I went to school in St. Louis I'm from southeastern Colorado so in St. Louis during the summer it was it was humid as hell it was so hot and I was just I wasn't having it so I wanted to be able to, you know, get my groceries in peace, and so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, you know, get a scooter. I want to ride a scooter, and in order to do that, in order to be able to do that at the time, uh, you had to take, you had to have a license to do that. So that first summer, I came back home to Colorado, and I signed up for a BRC course, and with the intent to ride a scooter, because at that time the scooter and the BRC course was together. So I rode up to Pueblo on, you know, to take this two-day course, and uh, I was the only person in the class who was riding a scooter. Everyone else was riding a motorcycle, and I was one of, I think, like three women, three women in the class. And the instructor was so funny, because he was like this, like, you know, like, hardcore military dude, 
and who didn't take like he, he just like was a no bs person so you're supposed to do like a written portion for the first half of the first day and then the second day you're supposed to ride and he was like we're not doing that we're just gonna go out and ride both days because you're not gonna learn if you don't go out there and ride and uh, you know it was really practical so i was like on board for it so we went out there the first day i was the only one on a scooter everyone else was on a motorcycle uh the instructor was giving you know the lowdown of where the where the clutch was where the throttle was where the gear shift was where the brakes were and uh you know mid while he was giving that spiel my scooter shut off and i was like uh <laughs> sir <laughs> sir my scooter shut off so he comes over and he turns it back on and i don't remember i really don't remember if it was gas or electric because i didn't pay attention to mechanical stuff back then um but i was like that was weird and so he keeps going we're doing drills just like straight back and forth around around cones in our in our own line and after going for like three minutes the scooter shut off again and y'all i <laughs> i hands down believe in energy and things happening for a reason like there's no accidents uh so i think it was just meant for whatever was gonna come next to happen because i got his attention again and he comes over and he's like i don't have time for this because he tried to start it and it didn't start so he puts the scooter away and he pulls out the only motorcycle left in the in the trailer which is like this tiny tiny motorbike for like a kid it was like a kid size motorbike but like I, i'm telling you guys i'm 411 it was it was perfectly my size i was able to touch it like flat foot the ground um my knees were even a little bit bent but like i was rocking it like at first i was scared because i was like i didn't come here to ride a motorcycle yo i don't want to fail this class <laughs> you know i don't want to waste the money to to be here and, and then not go home with a license um and he's just like you'll, you'll do fine and so he just started you know going back to the drills and like I had to play catch up with the controls because I missed that part because I was on a scooter while he was explaining. So I was like, I don't have to listen to this. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> but like, I, I caught up really fast. Um, and I ended up doing really well on the bike. And it it was so weird, y'all. I'm telling you, like, it the, the controls came so intuitively to me. And I don't, I, I, I'm someone who believes in past lives and I feel like I was like meant to ride a motorcycle and that's the reason why the scooter sh the scooter shut off and why everything took place the way it did because uh, I ended up doing really well on the motorcycle and <laughs> like halfway through the class I accidentally just let out the clutch <laughs> with the throttle like all the way up and I did a, I did a wheelie and I landed it and I was like oh shit <laughs> it was so cool but um you know that that like the fact that i landed it that just came intuitively and so you know it's like okay maybe i can do this i i may be 411 i may maybe super super short but i can do this you know and i ended up passing because i wasn't intimidated by the size of the bike it was it was perfect for me and uh i think i think both of the other women in the class like i passed like barely um because i had this habit of looking down in front of me instead of looking ahead um which was part of the you know part of the grading system was to see if you could do turns without looking down um so i got counted off big time for that but i i barely passed and i think both of the other women in the class who were riding uh you know regular sized bikes i think they were like 250 rebels um didn't pass and i felt so bad because you know i could i could super duper relate to being intimidated by the size of, of a bike you know and i i could see them struggling because the bike was so big and heavy that they were scared to you know operate um you know with confidence and that was something that i didn't have to deal with but <laughs> you know that kind of anxiety and the fear of that came seven years later when i bought my first bike <laughs> i didn't have to deal with it taking the class but it came with you know seven years later so i don't have any friends who ride a motorcycle well maybe i do i don't i, I don't know um I, I don't know i don't think i do i really don't think i do um i know people who ride motorcycles but i don't think i have anyone who like i hang out with a regular on a regular basis who rides motorcycles um, none of my family members ride motorcycles. Uh, the only 
person I know who rides a motorcycle that I'm related to is my aunt's husband and they live in upstate Wisconsin so I really didn't have anybody to kind of guide me or teach me um, and I'm just someone who's super independent when it comes to learning I always say I'm a professional student and I just love the process of learning new things so you know that wasn't really a big deal I was just like okay we're gonna do this and I had been putting it off for so long because I actually did not get a scooter or a motorcycle after I took that class I went back to Missouri um, you know basically moved there lived there for four years and I got a really sweet job that I was able to save up to buy a car so I actually didn't even end up getting a scooter or a motorcycle and then I came back to Colorado and I had a bunch of life things happen which we'll get into that in you know future moto vlogs uh, I, <laughs> I don't think I said this I, I'm going to the DMV to get my to get my license right now <laughs> But we're not doing this recording live because I haven't got my audio situated yet. But anyway, I just had to say that I'm getting my my plates right now as as we're recording this. So anyway, um, yeah. So seven years later, um, you know, I was in a comfortable place in life where I could be able to do this. Um, it was in the midst of the whole covid thing that was going on. Um, you know, everything had just reopened and yo it was crazy there was like a there was like a two week waiting period to get into the dmv to get my plates registered it was like holy crap and then i went there and then some dude started yelling about his marriage license <laughs> and like there was an employee there that didn't technically work for the dmv they were just there to do like covid stuff and and process you know like like a clientele information type stuff and she went to go get an, a DMV employee and the DMV employee came out and just started like just owning this guy <laughs> it was so funny it was so funny anyway um yeah I got my plates I'm official and it's a good plate too sometimes you get some stupid names for the plates but I got one that's easily memorable I'm not gonna say it but it is cool it's a cool plate <clears throat> I had always, like for the past three years, have been obsessing over getting a black Rebel 500. I didn't want to get a 250 because I, I just didn't. I wanted my dream bike. I didn't want to, you know, get a 250 and then get over it and then have to sell that. You know, I wanted my dream bike right away. And the Rebel 500 has always been my dream bike. And I was like, okay, <laughs> we're not putting this off anymore. We're just going to do it. Uh, and my intuition was just like, do it. So <laughs> I did it. I did it. I did it. And the bike sat in my driveway for about two weeks because I was getting over the mental mindset of being 4'11 and actually riding a regular size bike for the first time and also being on a motorcycle without any previous you know I've been on the back of a motorcycle before but I haven't been dri driven a motorcycle since that class that I took and that was the only time that I had so it was a really big um, mental mental thing to to be able to ride it at my height and the two things that I was worried the most about was dropping my bike and not being able to pick it back up and so the first time I took it out uh, you know, I remembered everything about, you know, the clutch, um, the gear shifts, uh, the, the brakes. What I didn't remember was not to brake while the front wheel was turned. And so I took it out. It was all good. I came back and I have a circle of driveway right now. So when I pulled into the driveway, I braked while the wheel was turned and that, that shit just toppled over. <laughs> And I was like, it was like three o'clock in the morning, so it wasn't really a big deal. Um, but yeah, I was like, ah, damn it, damn it. So now's the moment of truth. Can I pick it back up? And I'm 4'11, but my legs are pretty strong. They're pretty beefy. And I, I, I am thankful for the like 12 years that I did track and field <laughs> just to build up my beefy legs. So I was able to pick it back up. And so I was like, okay, those are the two things I was worried about. 
second time I took it out, I took it out on like this country road and it was the middle of the night. There were like 15 deer. There were so many deer. I, I passed so many deer and I got like, I don't know, like five minutes out and I was like, okay, I, <laughs> I don't want to do this because something's going to run in front of me and I hadn't learned how to emergency brake at that time. So I was like, I'm not going to risk it. So I pulled over on the shoulder and you know, I was still figuring out the, the, the um, friction zone and the clutch and the throttle, which, you know, I still kind of, <laughs> I'm still kind of figuring out, but it's whatever. And I stalled it. And because the shoulder was uneven, uh, the bike toppled over on the other side. So it fell on the left side the first time, and the second time it fell on the right side. And I was like, oh, come on. So I messed up both sides of my bike. I think my front my front turning signal, my front right turning signal, uh, the bulb, the bulb broke. I picked it back up, turned it around, and at that point I got really discouraged. I was like, ah, oh, shit. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. And I don't think the bike would have dropped if, um, you know, my legs, I can, I can touch the ground, I can tiptoe, I have about a half an inch on my shoes, so I can tiptoe, but I can't flat foot on either side. Um, you know, the only reason I, the only way I can flat foot is if I have one foot down um, and the other foot on the brake, so, um, just learning how to do that uh, on the spot, I, I really had to get used to. So when I took it back home, I was like, okay. <laughs> it took me a couple days after that to get back out. And then the third time that I went out, my legs were shaking so bad because I was like, don't drop the bike, don't drop the bike, don't drop the bike, don't stall, don't stall, don't stall. And, <laughs> you know, it occurred to me that I was like, I can't, I can't be afraid of you know, dropping the bike or afraid to stall out again, you know, because that's going to stop me from having confidence to to actually not do it. You know what I mean? So, you know, the third time I took it out, I actually recorded it. And I think that was the number one thing that helped me in overcoming um, my fear of riding. So, you know, I had a successful ride. Nothing happened. Um, I took it back home. Everything was working fine. And, you know, I watched that video of me riding and I was like, yo, what the fuck? I actually did it. Let's, let's go, you know? And then from there on, it just, I took it out like once every two days just to like in the middle of the night, getting used to cornering, getting used to the clutch, getting used to, you know, shifting a little bit faster, um, you know, stopping on, on tra at traffic lights, um, stopping on hills or when the ground is uneven, which is something that's really hard for me for me to do um you know it's really difficult to walk the bike when it's in neutral um because i'm basically on my tiptoes but you know I'm, I'm learning i'm learning how to do that pretty pretty you know just little by little and you know setting small milestones you know like first it was okay i want to be able to ride around at night okay now i want to be able to make you know tight turns okay now i want to be able to um, you know, ride during the day. Okay, now I want to be able to go 65 miles an hour, you know, so setting just like little goals really helped me to progress and the mental capacity of doing this alone rather than, you know, having someone to help you and guide you. You know, I watch, I watch YouTube videos and stuff like that, but um, not having someone there, it's just the way that I learn best. And um, I think that was something that, uh, you know, gave me, gave me a lot of confidence that I, that I could do it. And so after that, I was like, okay, we're, we're, we're golden. We can do this now. I got my camera and then started the idea of, okay, let's, let's moto vlog. Let's, let's talk about some other stuff. Uh, I have a lot of stuff to talk about. I'm only, I've only been alive for a quarter of a century and I've been through a lot of crazy crap, crazy crap, y'all. I'm telling you, crazy crap that I was not expecting to happen <laughs> but you know I think it's important to note that I feel like I went through all of that stuff the stuff that we're gonna talk about in these moto vlogs it's for a reason I went through that stuff for a reason and I think the point of it was so that I could share what I learned and how I got through those times um, and that I'm still moving forward. I'm still, I'm still going, you know, just like getting over the mental state of being able to ride a bike 
at my height um you know and i'm not even i mean people who are shorter you know ride motorcycles i'm just it's just uh it was just a a really a really big thing that i was really proud of because um you know i didn't it was something that i didn't think i could do and um you know i got over that so our lifestyle stuff more spirituality stuff stick around subscribe uh I am going to be logging my journey of this new endeavor that I, I'm starting over um, with like very limited resources, like not a lot of money, only the bag on my back, uh, carry on and, um, and how that's going to go. I don't even know what I'm going to do. I don't even know what I'm going to do. I, I like a lot of stuff. I like... I'm I'm here to experience as much as I can. So if you wanna, if you wanna, you know, come along for the ride, subscribe. I have a Patreon um, that I just started. I don't really know how that works yet. But um, anyway, along the way, I'm gonna be developing a an an empirical guidebook that I've been working on for some time about my spiritual journey and translating, you know, my life path um <laughs> up until up until this moment and a little bit after and uh kind of just logging logging this crap because the i'm telling you guys the thing with the bike shutting off that did not happen or not the bike the scooter shutting off that did not happen by accident hell no hell no <laughs> did not happen by accident it was meant to happen it was meant to push my boundaries um and we don't we don't really we, we don't really like to push ourselves out of our comfort zone very often and so sometimes the universe is just like yo you gotta move <laughs> you're, you're, too, you're too static you know um and things like that happen for a reason so hope you guys enjoyed this story i'm i hope you didn't get motion sickness for the positioning of the camera i can't play first person video games because there's no reference point you know and that's kind of what i did in this video on accident but I need to find a better place to put my camera so that my handlebars or something is in the screen. Uh, I'll get that worked out. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. If you stick around, peace out. JL.